The Tour of Spain is typically known for its sky high temperatures and riders having to deal with it, trying to keep cool whenever they can. But as we come up here towards the Pyrenees, the weather has changed somewhat. It's down to below 20 degrees for the first time and the rain has started to fall. So how do riders cope with this change of weather? Well, we caught up with a few of them before the start of the race to find out what they're wearing and how they deal with it. Today we have, um, it starts with a descent. So we want to be aero, of course. Um, if you have a rain jacket on, you'll never want to be in a break. I do have intentions of being in a break, so I'll put this on. I'm not going to have an undershirt because it's quite hot. There's always discussion, guys having arm warmers, undershirts. If you wear an undershirt, it carries too much sweat or rain up the hill, it's too heavy. Um, if you wear too much clothes, it's too hard. It's too less clothes, you freeze up, you've got no power. It's, you know, it's a very dis big discussion. Everyone's wearing something different, as you can see, but that's just... That's what we do, we all take a gamble and risk. Well, you have a good look at what everyone else is doing first and, uh, and then try and make your own decision. But my theory is always it's better to have a little bit too much than too little. It doesn't matter how many rain jackets you put on, if you get cold, you're cold. When you're travelling at 80k an hour and you're uh, exposed, to the, exposed to the rain and wind, I don't think anything's waterproof. Rain's falling in Spain, Graham. How are you dealing with that? It doesn't look like you're uh, too concerned. I've got a rain jacket in my pocket, but uh, I'm trying to forget about it for now. Hopefully it stays away and uh, I don't really like the rain that much. I saw a lot of guys with arm warmers and, and the gabber jacket. I was, oh, it's not a good sight but uh, I've got two rain bags so if, if need be I can go back to the car and, and get it. I'll probably spend a fair bit of today near a car <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Whilst there were only a few spots of rain when we spoke to the riders before the start, things soon took a dramatic turn for the worse. At the end of the neutralised section, the heavens opened, with the majority of the bunch going back to their team cars to get rain jackets and extra clothing, and then, when they hit the mountains, back again to get as much on as they could in order to try and keep some sort of warmth in their bodies. What's the most amount of clothing that you had on? Um, yeah, two rain jackets, arm warmers, uh, under jersey, but it was still freezing. Well, it's now a full six hours since we caught up with the riders to find out what clothing they'd be starting today's stage in. And in the end, it's turned into one of the most horrendous days in terms of weather that I can remember at the Vuelta since it moved to its late season slot. Almost doesn't matter how much clothing you put on. When you get to 2,400 metres of altitude, it's five degrees and pouring with rain, it's almost inevitable that you're going to get cold. We've had quite a few riders pulling out due to hypothermia, amongst them Ivan Basso, who was sitting in seventh place overall. And to add insult to injury, the buses have had to park at the foot of the last climb, so the riders have had to ride back down, but they'll be getting straight into the buses, taking their clothes off and jumping into a nice warm shower. For the start, for the start, put it right behind your neck, down the back of the jersey, uh, just to keep the neck cool and keep the temperature down.